Oh man, the US just got snubbed in China. What does this mean? Hello everyone, I am Dr. Chris Martinson of Peak Prosperity, and this is a report that I usually do three times a week for my subscribers. It's called the Scouting Report, and I just wanted you to be aware of what we do. So it looks something like this. If you like these scouting reports, hey, if this fits for you, if you want a trusted source of news, you can come by Peak Prosperity. And with a membership, hey, you get my content all the time, if that's a good thing to you. So let's start here with this. Uh, so Anthony Blinken heads over to China and it says China skips red carpet welcome for Blinken whose visit prompts cynicism and it's a very odd thing as a reporting here that well you know in China appearances the, the thoughtfulness of pageantry it all matters of course and so this was a very obvious snub Biden uh, sent Blinken over there or I guess Biden doesn't do anything these days but anyway Blinken he comes over to China and they admitted the usual practice of laying out a red carpet. He's not met by any super high level officials. You know, President Xi, obviously not there at all. And then he's brought in through the passenger terminal. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's a very obvious, obvious snub. So to see what that looks like, let's take a peek here. Um, this is what it looks like. I like how he waves. Like, who are you waving to? Your ambassadors? So there's some Chinese security officials, low level dignitary, and then just one, that one guy. He gets to meet that one guy. Everybody else is Chinese security. And then, those other two dudes over there are ambassadors. So that's it. That's the whole greeting party. So that kicked this whole thing off. And the reason we're doing this report is because of just how how silly this all got. So let's go to this now because, oh, my gosh, this is this is crazy. Um, I'll dig, get to that in a second. Get to that next. Yeah, this. Oh, this is a great post here by Kyle Anzalone. At Kyle Anzalone says here, quote, Blinken concludes China visit by threatening economic war. Oh, that sounds smart. Why don't we do that? That's uh, that would be a great idea. China just holds a few hundred billion U.S. treasuries and is our number one trade partner and makes all kinds of critical things that the United States can't live without. Sounds good. Good plan here. On the last day of his trip to China, he writes here, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken told Beijing that it must halt exports that aid Moscow's industrial base. Oh, they must. No, like, hey, if you do this, here's what we'll do. You know, normal diplomacy, a little back and forth. You give something, we get something. Um, You get something, we give something. None of that. It was just a demand, a petulant demand by Blinken that you must do what we say because we're America, right? Crazy stuff. Carrying on, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken ended his three-day trip to China by instructing Beijing to end exports that help Russia's industrial sector or face U.S. sanctions and tariffs. Really? In China, Blinken met with People's Republic of China President uh, Xi Jinping and Foreign Minister Wang Yi during his prepared remarks. Blinken explained the U.S. would weaken China's economy. It's a threat. If Beijing did not limit exports to Russia. Now, even as we seek to deepen cooperation where our interests align, the United States is very clear-eyed about the challenges posed by the PRC. He said the PRC is providing components that are powering Russia's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine. End quote. Um, of course, you know, everybody who's not a knucklehead understands that the United States conducted a brutal war of aggression against Iraq, which had no weapons of mass destruction, hadn't even threatened the United States. It did the same thing against Libya. And the United States is currently in Syria with nobody's invitation, completely against all international laws and rules. And here that same country is lecturing China that it needs to stop exporting to another country who the United States feels is involved in a naked war of aggression, which is uh, obviously, um, if you know anything at all about the Ukraine war, that was heavily provoked. And the United States got exactly what it wanted, which was a response from Russia, which it finally goaded into having uh, into acting. So and if you don't have that context, you really should just rewind start with the european association agreement ukraine in 2013 carry on through the minsk and then the minsk two agreements and the 14,000 dead russian-speaking civilians uh courtesy of ukraine's uh forces uh during 2014 to 24 22 all right so at any rate um i made it clear 
carrying on, quote, that if China does not address this problem, we will. I also expressed our concern about the PRC's unfair trade practices and the potential consequences of industrial overcapacity for global and U.S. markets, he said, blah, 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 blah. Um, so uh, this is, he says, he believes sanctions could be effective because the U.S. is a large buyer of Chinese products. And uh, unfortunately, Blinken, we don't manufacture many of those products, so we could create some trouble. But at any rate, the point here is that the United States is is just saying, look, you have to do what we say, full stop, we don't care. And we're not going to be diplomatic about it. And so that's why I, China already knew this this was going down, right? They already knew this was the direction of this. That's why there was no red carpet. Blinken is snubbed from the outset. But you want to see just how bad this is. Check this out. Check this out. Um, I love this. I love this. So this is the official photo that they took at the end. So <laughs> first off, look at the faces. You don't have to be like some social, you know, Q's expert to figure this out. Heck, even I can figure this out. I'm no expert, but look at the, look at the face on Blinken and look at, there's no handshake here and notice, <laughs> excuse me, Woo, because I'm tight. Notice his head is tilted away from the guest, right? And Blinken's leaning in a little like, oh, yeah, you know, it, it's just a total power play winner, loser. Uh, it's really embarrassing. And of course, this was fun too, because we saw here that when he was leading, leaving, just before that picture was taken, Chinese leader Xi uh, said, apparently can't wait for U.S. Secretary of State to leave, said into what they're calling a hot mic, but nothing's ever accidental in this space. Um, when is he leaving? Tonight. Good. Look at this. Watch, just watch the... Xi has his back turned to the direction that Blinken might be coming from right now. He's looking off another direction. He's pacing he's a little disinterested and here comes blinken to come out and watch who has to lean in for the handshake that's always a big sign who's going to move towards whom g plants his feet he's just standing there he's waiting holds his hand out blinken comes all the way over drops the hand for the picture click that's the picture we just analyzed and break we're done no final handshake no nothing out we go all right so that's the landscape right there and this is going to have enormous repercussions and by the way need we remember i just now let's look at the at the the same dynamic here between uh putin and g talking about hey change that hasn't happened in 100 years is coming we're driving this change together last march notice the warmth notice how they're leaning in towards each other there's the final handshake. Uh, it's all very chummy, very, very different feeling to that relationship. So United States is out on this particular relationship and is not doing anything to really, I think, repair that relationship. So it's going the bully route. We'll see how that plays out. This all plays into what I, I've been talking about with respect to the great taking. The chance that the United States is going to be able to bully its way towards any sort of happy outcome in this story is very low at this point in time. We should expect market gyrations, market weakness. We should expect trade wars, if not a hot war. You can feel it. It's all devolving. That's why at Peak Prosperity, we continue to talk about you need resilience. If you don't have a line on where your food is coming from or you haven't planted a garden, good luck. I think you're really going to need to think this through more carefully as well. What are you doing with your money and your wealth? How is that being held? You got to think this through. This is all changing really fast right now. And there's going to be a lot more losers and winners in this story. And the reason for that is because there's no easy way out of this debt crisis that we're in right now and the overall financial landscape. So this is where we are. And of course, the more you read and just follow along mainstream news, the more misinformed you're going to be. That's why we do what we do at Peak Prosperity. Now, for my subscribers, follow me back to Peak Prosperity. I got a lot more to say about what's going on in China right now, especially around the precious metals markets. Uh, good stuff there. For those of you who aren't subscribers, this is a taste of what I do three times a week, and we'll go through all the news and I'll digest it for you and help make sense of it. So with that, thanks very much, Peak Prosperity people. See you back over there.